there, folks. My name is Dan Goodman, and I want to welcome you to another rousing edition of Stormwind Studios Succinct Held Online Remote Training Sessions, or shorts, as we like to call them. This is the seventh short in the Wireless LAN Essentials series of shorts, specifically focusing on Cisco Wireless LAN access points. So please let me take a second to apologize for turning this particular short into one big giant piece of free advertisement for all things Cisco, but that's what it is. Now, I'm not downplaying the importance of this topic. It's very, very important. However, comma, it is a giant infomercial. That being said, for some of these features, for some of these AP models, I am going to defer to the Cisco website. Uh, mainly because some of the features we haven't had a chance to discuss yet and it kind of be wrong to introduce them now. And probably the biggest reason is that on the Cisco website, you can actually take advantage of the ability to compare items to each other, take a look at white papers and data sheets and all those sorts of things. And sometimes it is better to hear it from the horse's mouth. That being said, we are going to discuss some of these AP models. So the first series of models that we'll focus on, and you'll notice that they are broken down into indoor and outdoor categories, is going to be the 3700 series. The general idea is I'm gonna hit you here with about three or four different benefits and features, and then we're gonna press on from here. So the 3700 series gives us high density experience for enterprise networks. It is intended for mission critical, high performance applications. It is 802.11ac Wave 1 certified with 4x4 MIMO or MIMO, however you want to pronounce it, with future proofing for Wave 2. It includes features like Cisco Client Link 3.0, Clean Air, and Video Stream. The 3600 series is intended for mid to large size environments. This was Cisco's first 802.11n devices to support 4x4 MIMO. It has Client Link 2.0, Clean Air, and Video Stream, Future Proof Modularity with an add-on module for 802.11ac capabilities. The module is appropriately named. It is called the 802.11ac module. Now, the module itself is simply attached and begins providing the new capabilities. However, comma, the additional power draw will require either an enhanced POA switch providing up to 20 watts, a 802.3 AT POE plus switch providing up to 30 watts, or simply an external power injector. Now both the 3600 and the 3700 series have various add-on modules to enhance their capabilities. This would include things like a wireless security module for additional security and monitoring capabilities. It gives you the ability to have a third monitor radio for dual band monitoring, provides full spectrum analysis on all 2.4 and 5 gigahertz channels, and has integrated radio resource monitoring, or RRM, capabilities. It's easily installed with the same power exceptions as the 802.11ac module. The next one is going to be the hyperlocation module with advanced security. This is another 3600 and 3700 series add-on module that includes the same security features as the wireless security module, plus angle of arrival, otherwise known as AOA. This is an antenna arrays for up to one meter location accuracy, 802.11ac clean air capabilities, and integrated BLE beacon technology. Same power exceptions are going to apply. It also has a 3G or a 4G small cell module, which is actually a clip-on module offering mobile operators a licensed radio network extension. This is a new platform for mobile broadband without the need for too much additional infrastructure. This does not require an existing service provider agreement. Basically, install it, power it on, and go. This provides secure carrier grade Wi-Fi with 3G or 4G LTE small cells. The next family is going to be the 3500 series, which we uh, technically don't have pictured here because it was the first to market with the 802.11n clean air spectrum intelligence. 
giving us always on RF interference protection with self-healing and self-optimization. It had client link 2.0 clean air and video stream. It's not the most current and it's technically not at the end of sale, but I'm sure as soon as I just spit that line out, it's probably at the end of sale, which is why we don't have it pictured here, but it is still listed on the Cisco website as one of the available options. The 2700 series gave us 802.11 AC Wave 1 with Client Link 2.0 clean air and video stream. This was geared towards small to mid-sized deployments. You didn't have any sort of module support. Basically, what you bought is what you got. The 1700 series was a cost-efficient 802.11 AC compatible access point. It had Clean Air Express with speeds up to 867 megabits per second. Basic detection, basic classification, and basic mitigation of sources and inter of interference. It had both the unified and autonomous images in one single access point. That differs from other models where you had to upgrade and downgrade manually. You could issue a single command to switch back and forth between the two different images. The next family is the 1600 series, which was 802.11n based 3x3 MIMO designed for small to mid-size enterprises. Still six times better than anything you'd find with 802.11a or g. It had Client Link 2.0 video stream and Client Air Express. The 700 series was an 802.11n model with dual radio 2x2 MIMO with rates up to 300 megabits per second. The 600 series was specifically intended for teleworker environments because it was also known as the Office Extend Access Point or OEAP. This provided corporate connectivity without the need to initiate a VPN manually. It basically had 802.11n with 2x2 MIMO. The outdoor access points range from the 1570, which is considered the best in class. It has 802.11ac functionality with future-proof modularity like we saw with the 3700 and the 3600. 1550 is kind of the high functionality as Cisco likes to call it. It had 802.11n with various models with various features such as a GPS receiver and an antenna. The 1530 is considered the base outdoor model. 802.11n with a low profile and lower price, small and light with a shield or cover option to protect it from the elements. Now here we've kind of summarized all these features. This is a side-by-side -side comparison showing the indoor access point and their features. I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds because of the advancements in modern video technology. You have the ability to pause the video, so I'm not going to read this to you in its entirety. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, moving on. Here is a side-by comparison of the outdoor access points and their features. Once again, I'm gonna give you a couple of seconds to pause the video so you can jot down any notes you feel the need to do so. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. Moving on from there, we'll officially wrap up this particular succinct held online remote training session focusing on wireless LAN essentials. Make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you are notified of new shorts shortly. Take care.